With students back on campus and classes underway, it can only mean one thing, and that's that college basketball season is right around the corner. The Monmouth men's basketball program just released its 2015-16 schedule, and I was able to sit down with fifth-year head coach King Rice to talk about his daunting non-league ledger, as well as the always tough schedule in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. All right, Coach, it's the start of a new school year. Your team is back on campus. Classes are in session. Talk about where your team is right now after a summer in which they went to China, did a lot of off-season training, is now they're back on campus. Well, first off, the, Eddie, the energy on campus is always great when kids get back. Not just our team, but the football team, the soccer team, men and women, lacrosse, and just the, the track teams. So Mammoth is buzzing right now just because all the kids are back. Our team, our guys are very excited about the opportunity that we have this year. We had a great, great summer. We did get to go to China. That was an incredible experience on and off the court. But the, the cool thing, Eddie, is that our kids really worked out this summer and really had a goal in mind to get their bodies better and become a better team. Everybody stayed, and I, I think we made big progress. And Coach, all of that work and progress builds towards, in your fifth year now, one of, if not the most ambitious schedule in Monmouth basketball history. Uh, you're no stranger to playing big opponents, going on the road to Vanderbilt, North Carolina, Notre Dame in your years up to this point. But this year's schedule, specifically difficult, and we start talking about it with that opening trip out to California. You visit UCLA and USC, and just address those two games to start, and, and really it's an incredible schedule. Well, thanks, Eddie. We, um, we've, we've played a lot of teams, um, and in the first three years, uh, everybody probably was saying, well, they, maybe they shouldn't do these games. They keep losing by a lot of points. And then last year, we didn't win one, but I think we broke through. We earned a lot of respect by playing West Virginia very tough, playing Maryland tough, playing SMU tough. Uh, Rutgers beat us on a last second shot. So I think our program has, has moved up a little bit in being able to, to deal with uh, programs that are considered high majors. Um, and then the opportunity to be able to go and play in Pauley Pavilion, John Wooden, 10 national championships. You can't, you can't sit here and even start to name the great things that have happened at UCLA, and our kids get to play in Pauley Pavilion. So I'm excited about that. Uh, we're, our kids are excited about it. I think they, they want to play in this game. And uh, Steve Alford, I'm just thankful that he would, he would do it for us. And then before we look at some of the rest of the, of the non-league games, you then during Thanksgiving take a trip down to Orlando to take part in the Advocare Invitational against a loaded field. You start with Notre Dame, and then if you look at the other teams you might play, there's not a team in that mix that wasn't a tournament team last season. You've got Dayton and Wichita State and Iowa, and just a loaded, loaded field down in Orlando. Talk about that challenge. Well, we start off actually playing USC, which is a part of the Advocare. So after we play UCLA, we get to play USC. Andy Enfield was nice enough to, to take that game on, um, us going out there and playing them as part of the tournament. And then uh, you go down to Orlando and uh, you got Notre Dame. Uh, we played them a couple of years ago. Mike Bray's a great, great coach. The program is doing as well as it's done in years. Um, so that will be another big time challenge for us. Uh, I think this is a big Notre Dame area. It's going to be on Thanksgiving Day, so I think we'll, we'll, we'll set records on how many people have watched the Mammoth game and, and against Notre Dame. And, and really, it's no stranger to your program. A couple years ago, visiting UNC on New Year's Day, so you like to play those big holiday games, huh? Well, we, we like to play the big games, um, and, and a couple of them have fallen on holidays, so we're, we're just excited that, that we feel like we've made progress and we want to challenge anybody that we can. Coach, before we look at the league schedule, the rest of the non-conference schedule, as always, incredibly difficult. There's trips in a row to Georgetown, and you go to Rutgers, and Army West Point, and Cornell in an order, and then you have Drexel as well, Wagner coming into the MAC, and, and without not losing focus on those games, talk about those challenges as well, because those are very, very quality programs up and down, some very tough road trips in there. Well, we, um... We, we always want to have home games for our fans. Uh, I feel like we have great fans, and we try to put together a schedule where our fans are going to get to see us early. I have to apologize for this year because we were not able to get that done. Uh, most of the teams needed home games 
it was one of those things you sit in the room and see who's going to blink first and you're just waiting to get your schedule done so I was the guy that said you know what we'll go on the road this year against these teams and then the next year they'll have to come back so it is a very challenging schedule um, but I think our, our team will be ready for it uh, the kids have had as good of a summer as we've had since we've been here a lot of them are juniors now so we're not the little boys anymore we, we had a little bit of success last year and we're just trying to have a little bit more this year and then now as we dive into the league portion of the schedule uh, obviously the mac a very very difficult league top to bottom such great coaches in this conference um, and the league first trip out sends the hawks out to western new york so one of the most difficult road trips i would think in the region for any league around here you go out and you play canisius and Niagara. We start there before we get to the rest of the league schedule. But last year, Mom was able to sweep that trip, but neither game obviously easy with how good those teams are. Well, Coach Barron is is a veteran. He's been doing it a long time. He wins wherever he goes. So we open up with them. That's going to be a challenge. And now Chris Casey has been there a few years. His team keeps getting better. Um, and a lot of people want that trip later in the year. I truly like it early before the snow really gets settled up in Buffalo. So I'm, I'm, hope, I'm hopeful that we go up there and have success on the court. And we have great weather, so we don't get stuck up there. Uh, a couple of teams got stuck last year. I'm sure the bus driver, whoever goes out that trip, will be thankful for that as well with the early season. Uh, but before we take a look at the overall MAC schedule, I want to focus in on, and obviously this is the furthest thing from your mind now, but the second to last week of the season, both Manhattan and Iona come here to the MAC. Obviously, the, the two big dogs, if you will, on the block in this league the last couple of years, your team now, as long with some others, right on the on the cusp of joining them. And just talk about those two games and, and those two programs, what it means to bring them here to the MAC so late in the season, close to playoff time. Well, I, I'm hopeful that the, the schedule makers felt like we'd be one of the teams that might be fighting them this year to, to maybe overtake them. Uh, those two programs have been two of the best in college basketball over the years. They've won for a long, long time, and now they're continuing to do that. Um, last year, I, I said we, we want to be like Manhattan and Iona. We want to be the team that's standing on Monday night. Um, and I thought we had gotten a lot closer than maybe we actually were. Uh, Semi-final night, Iona showed us they had a different gear, and uh, we're, we're still excited about getting closer to them. They have been the best teams, but we're, we're the up and coming team. And, and now our guys are a little bit older. We're gonna challenge them. Um, them coming back to back late in the year, hopefully that means we're in a great spot. And it would be nice if maybe we're in front of them and they're coming to our building. I know that's a tall task, but that's what we're trying to get, trying to accomplish. And Coach, no doubt the Mac is going to be rocking those two games and every home game this season. And we'd be remiss not to mention Obviously, the depth of this conference, your rivalry with both Ryder and St. Peter's, and what Coach Baggett and Coach Dunn are doing, and obviously the rest of the league. Great coaches up and down the schedule. There, there's no easy evening in the MAC, and, and I know you've been through the league now a couple of years, and you know that better better than anyone. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, Jimmy Patsos up at Siena, uh, Coach Maker at Marist is, is getting his feet wet. He's been a really, really successful head coach, so I know he's going to have his kids challenging this year. Tom at, at Quinnipiac has done an outstanding job over there. Um, Kevin, Kevin Baggett, I just think, I think Kevin has done as good of a job as anybody since I've been in the league. Uh, he's recruiting well, he coaches his team well, his kids act the right way. So I'm just happy that we're a part of this outstanding league. Commissioner Enzer has done a great job once again, uh, just getting the teams ready and in a good position. And now we gotta go out and play the game. Coach, we appreciate a few minutes of your preseason schedule. Obviously, we look forward to sitting down with you a bunch during the season. As always, thank you very much.